so I started work on a uh, on a chip. I was like, okay, what's it going to take to make a chip? And my first notions were all completely wrong about why, about like how you could improve on GPUs. Uh, and I will take this. This is from uh, Jim Keller on your podcast, mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of my absolute favorite descriptions of computation. Um, so there's three kinds of computation paradigms that are common in the world today. Uh, there's CPUs, and CPUs can do everything. CPUs can do add and multiply, they can do load and store, and they can do compare and branch. Mm -hmm. And when I say they can do these things, they can do them all fast, right? So compare and branch are unique to CPUs, and what I mean by they can do them fast is they can do things like branch prediction and speculative execution, and they spend tons of transistors and they use like super deep reorder buffers in order to make these things fast. Then you have a simpler computation model GPUs. GPUs can't really do compare and branch. I mean, they can, but it's horrendously slow. Mm -hmm. But GPUs can do arbitrary load and store, right? GPUs can do things like X dereference Y. Mm -hmm. So they can fetch from arbitrary pieces of memory. They can fetch from memory that is defined by the contents of the data. Um, the third model of computation is DSPs. And DSPs are just add and multiply, right? Like they can do load and stores, but only static load and stores, only loads and stores that are known before the program runs. Mm -hmm. And you look at neural networks today, and 95% of neural networks are all the DSP paradigm. They are just statically scheduled adds and multiplies. So TinyGuard really took this idea and, and I'm still working on it to extend this as far as possible. Um, every stage of the stack has Turing completeness, right? Python has Turing completeness. And then we take Python, we go into C++, which is Turing complete. And maybe C++ calls into some CUDA kernels, which are Turing complete. The CUDA kernels go through LVM, which is Turing complete, into PTX, which is Turing complete, into SAS, which is Turing complete, on a Turing complete processor. I want to get Turing completeness out of the stack entirely. Because once you get rid of Turing completeness, you can reason about things. Rice's theorem and the halting problem do not apply to add mole machines. <laughs> okay. What's the power and the value of getting Turing completeness out of, out of, are we talking about the hardware or, or the software? Every layer of the stack. Every layer. Every layer of the stack, removing Turing completeness allows you to reason about things, right? So the reason you need to do branch prediction in a CPU, and the reason it's prediction, and the branch predictors are, I think they're like 99% on CPUs. Why do they get 1% of them wrong? Well, they get 1% wrong because you can't know, right? That's the halting problem. It's equivalent to the halting problem to say whether a branch is going to be taken or not. Mm -hmm. um, I can show that. But the AdMole machine, the neural network, runs the identical compute every time. The only thing that changes is the data. So when you realize this, you think about, okay, how can we build a computer and how can we build a stack that takes maximal advantage of this idea? Mm -hmm. uh, so... What makes TinyGrad different from other neural network libraries is it does not have a primitive operator even for matrix multiplication. And this is every single one. They even have primitive operators for things like convolutions. So no matmol. No matmol. Well, here's what a matmol is. So I'll use my hands to talk here. Mm -hmm. So if you think about a cube, and I put my two matrices that I'm multiplying on two faces of the cube, mm -hmm. right? You can think about the matrix multiply as, okay, the n cubed, I'm going to multiply for each one in the cubed, and then I'm going to do a sum, which is a reduce up to here to the third face of the cube, and that's your multiplied matrix. So what a matrix multiply is, is a bunch of shape operations, right? A bunch of permutes, reshapes, and expands on the two matrices. A multiply, n cubed. A reduce, n cubed, which gives you an n squared matrix. Okay, so what, what is the minimum number of operations that can accomplish that if you don't have uh, matmol as a primitive? So TinyGrad has about 20. Um, and you can compare TinyGrad's uh, OPSET or IR to things like XLA or PrimTorch. So XLA and PrimTorch are ideas where like, okay, Torch has like 2,000 different kernels. Mm -hmm. um, PyTorch 2.0 introduced PrimTorch, which has only 250. Uh, TinyGrad has order of magnitude 25. It's, it's 10x less than XLA or PrimTorch. And you can think about it as kind of like risk versus CISC, right? These other things are CISC like systems. Uh, TinyGrad is risk. And risk one. Risk architecture is going to change everything. Okay. 1995, hackers. <laughs> Wait, really? That's an actual thing? Angelina Jolie delivers the line risk architecture is going to change everything in 1995. Wow. And here we are with ARM in the phones and ARM everywhere. Wow. I love it when movies actually have real things in them. Right? <laughs>